Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Um, it's really, really great to have you join us today. I'm Anna. I'm one of the campaign managers here at Bertrell. Um, just before I introduce the wonderful founders of Nourish, I'd like to just acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I'm beaming in from today. I'm based on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I'd like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Now, Birchall, if you've never heard of us, we're working with Nourish on an upcoming crowdsource funding offer. What's crowdsource funding, you might ask? Um, some of you may also know it as equity crowdfunding, but it's basically a relatively new form of fundraising in Australia that allows startups and small businesses to raise capital from a large number of retail or potentially smaller investors and wholesale, also known as sophisticated investors, through an online platform that's virtual. So instead of seeking funding from traditional sources such as banks, venture capitalists, companies can actually turn to the general public, often their communities or their customers who love them, to raise money in exchange for shares or equity in their business. Now, virtual financial services is the licensed intermediary for the offer. And the information and discussion in this Q&A is for informational purposes and shouldn't be considered as advice or a recommendation to invest. We always recommend that you do your own research and always consider the offer document and the general CSF risk warning before investing. Now, that's available on virtual.com, which is probably how you found the link to this webinar. Um, so today I'm joined with James and Monica Meldrum founders of Nourish Foods, who you may have actually heard of them as Whole Kids, perhaps their funky new brands, Just Add and Offbeat. Now, a little bit of info about how today's session is going to run, because you don't want to hear from me for too long. We'll have a little bit of a presentation from the team to start with, and then we'll throw to Q&A. So there's a Q&A box down the bottom here. Please, throughout the presentation, pop any questions you might have in the box. And also, this session will be recorded. So if you have to run off, I get it, we're all busy. Don't worry, we'll send through uh, the recording afterwards as well. So that's enough from me. I'm going to hand over to James and Monica to introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I'm Monica Meldrum. I'm James Meldrum. Hi, everyone. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for joining us during a lunch break. We just thought we'd run through a quick presentation of not only our new brands, but how the, where the business is at at the moment um, and how we're excited to be crowdfunding again to um, really accelerate our plans for the future for whole kids and our two new brands. So Nourish, we are a purpose-led, purpose-focused business um, focused on snacking for new generations of health and wellness. And each brand we've developed quite strategically um, to fulfill a role to meet global megatrends that we're seeing and that is targeted to a specific audience. And uh, the two new brands come about as a result of feedback we've had over the years. So uh, we've been in business now for 18 years with Whole Kids. But uh, over that time, we've seen a generation of consumers come through We've often had parents saying, can you please create an older range for kids and for us because we eat your products. And so um, we have thought quite uh, seriously and looked at how we do it in a way that really connects with our audience and uh, from a generational perspective. So, and likewise with Just Dad, we'll, we'll present later how that came about. But, um, you know, both brands we see as big disruptors of the ca category currently and as B Corps to also, um, you know, commit to our purpose and our social impact. So our distribution at the moment, Whole Kids, we are within Coles, Woolworths, Chemist Warehouse, the Independence, Harris Farm. We do a lot within food service. Through the airlines, you'll see us on children's meals. And we've continued to grow our footprint both domestically and internationally for Whole Kids. With Offbeat, uh, we have launched within Metcash, within the Independent Network, Harris Farm, the distributor group. And we're looking at, uh, we're also within working with Bounce and various um, different different QSR uh, franchise businesses as well. And then Just Add, we have just this week gone live in Chemist Warehouse. In Countdown, uh, we're going live within the next week. And then Coles coming up in September. And we're in discussions with the airlines and Harris Farm um, to also present a more sustainable proposition on board and within food service. 
So we're really leveraging our current distribution network and experience to drive the two new brands. Um, Whole Kids is firmly positioned as the fastest growing brand on shelf at the moment. And we'll show you some statistics from IRI data in a moment. Um, and we have 15 SKUs distributed through supermarkets, pharmacy, food service, and QSR. And our recent Woolworths ranging has seen a, a decision to increase our range by 30% distribution. So all products going through to the full, pretty much full store footprint. Um, um, to give us 3,000 new distribution points, which is really exciting. And that's commencing at the end of this month. Um, Offbeat, we have launched through the independents, through Metcash and QSR. Uh, and we, we are looking currently at wider distribution, having to sign with a distributor group um, to service PNC and major school and major school provider from April, well, it's now May <laughs> onwards uh, in process. Um, and then we're in re review with a major retailer to looking to roll that one out early in the new year. Uh, and likewise, we've launched within Malaysia, Hong Kong and Singapore. And then just add, we've just launched uh, in major retail and supermarket in New Zealand. So Countdown and Chemist Warehouse with uh, Coles coming on board. And it is really a first for this category for on-the-go snacking with a sustainable option for parents and children. Uh, in terms of, you know, our highlights, you can see here, this is our 52-week um, data within Woolworths. So uh, Whole Kids has performed at a rate of 76% um, compared with the rest of the subcategory at 11%. So we're really proud of the growth that we've experienced and we know that there's still a lot there, particularly with the new distribution. And just some of our sort of high-level um metrics in terms of how we perform financially and through sales over the last uh, year or two. Uh, the last five years, we've generated over about 23 million in revenue, which is a fantastic achievement. Um, year on year, we've increased by about 20 27%. So that's financial year 22 versus the previous year. And just in the first half of this financial year, we've actually increased our revenue by almost 50%. So 45% year on year or half year on year. Uh, and as Monica has just mentioned, in Woolworths alone, we've grown the cat, grown our, our um, sales by 77% over a 52-week period, which is a fantastic result compared to competitors. And um, just to harking back to our purpose, um, if you might have seen our purpose when we were whole kids, it was all about creating a healthy, happy life for kids. We've now broadened that with the product portfolio to really make it easier for people to enjoy, again, healthier, happy lives, but sort of mouth, one mouthful at a time. And uh, we are... Uh, certified B Corp. We're also a member of 1% for the Planet. Uh, we're a signatory, global signatory to the Sustainable Development Goals. Also, a lot of our products are certified organic. So for us, purpose and profit really go hand in hand. And, you know, wherever possible, whatever we try and do is we try and meet those two objectives at the same time through anything we do. Uh, and as Monica mentioned, you know, we've been over almost two decades, two decades, we've been getting feedback from our customers saying, look, can you make older product kids? Can you make, you know, younger ones? Because we want them more nutritious. And we see this as kind of a bit, sort of an ecosystem through the generations. So this is just a snapshot of kind of the generational change that will happen over the next, uh, you know, couple of years. And it's quite a significant change in terms of the shift in buying behaviour and who's going to really influence purchasing decisions from now on. Um, and you can see how the product ranges, the brands that we've created, kind of fit quite nicely into the generational, um, you know, the circular generations there. So at the moment, sort of whole kids appeals to, um, you know, the younger kids, sort of like 12 months plus, um, up to about sort of six or seven years old. And that's fir that's been firmly consistent over the 18 years. And, you know, that generation has now become Gen Z over the years, over the last 10 years, and they're now wanting you know, um, different snacks. They want um, snacks that kind of look like junk food, but actually are far more nutritious. And that's the way we've developed hot offbeat, which we'll discuss in a minute. But as you can see, there'll be some generational shifts. Gen, Gen Alpha, which is the new generation, which is coming in um, uh, over the next 10, uh, dec 10, 10 years or so, they will be the largest generation in world's history. It's quite an amazing. It's around 2 billion people around the world and they will influence... Uh, not only what, um, you know, what their parents want for them as babies, but also when they moved into that school age in terms of lunchbox snacks and, and things like that. So we see a whole ecosystem there of brands that are self-supporting and self-reinforcing. And these markets are huge. Uh, you know, at a global scale, the kids' food and beverage market 
is expected to reach you know almost 150 billion US uh, in the next four years. It's a huge market. Uh, likewise, the baby food market is about to reach the same size uh, at about in about 10 years' time. Uh, and the real big gorilla in this in this whole thing is the snack food market, the global snack food market, which is currently over a half a billion US, but forecast in the next five to six years to reach you know over 800 billion. It's a huge market, and there's a lot of uh, influences driving that. One of them is obviously the emerging Gen Z and their purchasing decisions and what they really want out of snack foods um, from the next five or 10 years. So we thought we'd introduce Off Feet. We're not like other snacks. We are appealing to Gen Z and we've developed the brand to really speak their language in conjunction with the youth market and kids who tried, tested the product and been involved through the process with us. So with Off Feet, we're addressing uh, global consumer mega trends that are not dissimilar from whole kids. So nighted sugar, the sugar movement, uh, healthy and nutritious products, all natural, clean foods, flavour innovation, authenticity, sustainable packaging and conscious brands so it's everything we're currently talking to that we're extending to this generation so gen z as james pointed out they're a really large diverse digitally native generation and they're fast becoming primary cultural trend drivers um, their size and purchasing power is expected to make a bigger impact than previous generations on retail industries and brand preferences uh, and one thing that you know we've noticed is that Gen Z, they really do hold deep concerns about the environment, environmental issues, creating change, whether it's through uh, equality, discrimination, uh, and, you know, the negative social impact of business. So it's something that we really want to play into and support strongly. And through Whole Kids, we've been out there climate striking with a lot of these kids. And at the top end, they'll soon be having children, if not already themselves, and moving into just out and into Whole Kids. So, um, you know, and I think the thing that at the moment, a lot of health food just doesn't provide brand appeal or, um, you know, the the social impact that this generation are really looking for businesses to make. So um, just the opportunity, we believe uh, this generation, they are not looking at three square meals a day. Um, they're out and they're, they're looking at meal replacement, snacking all day, which is in um, permissible indulgence. So um, they want the look and the taste of junk food, but healthier and are seeking really authentic brands that share their culture concerns and values. And this is just an example of the way we talk, we are talking and communicating with the generation. So what you see is what you get. We're straight up plant-based snacks made with real ingredients that taste damn delicious. So no agendas, motives, hidden artificial stuff disguised as suspicious numbers, but that's not all. And, uh, you know, we are straight up with smashing stereotypes and the social impact work that we'll be doing will uh, be a, really alongside talking to this generation. Uh, so these are the four lead SKUs that we're going out with, the uh, tomato carrot, um, vegan cheese and the kale wasabi. They're plant-based, they're baked, not faked, 85% whole grain, 60% less fat, less than 90 calories per serve and a minimum of three and a half star health rating. And we are looking at the moment at compostable packaging, which, uh, you know, this crowdfunding will help drive a lot of that innovation in, around packaging and sustainability as well. Uh, moving into our heartland and whole kids, we're all about creating a healthier, happier world for kids. So Whole Kids really was founded on the premise that kids deserve a healthy life and a healthy world. And we've created, we really have created the children's snacking category, which didn't exist before um, we established the business. And we've grown to become Australia's leading range of plant-based, organic, additive-free, allergen-friendly snacks for families. Uh, and, you know, there is our belief as well that business can be a force for change. So this speaks really to the millennial generation and millennials are seeking healthier options for themselves, for their kids. Um, they're making ethical shopping choices. Um, you know, as you can see, McKinsey say that millennials are four times more likely than baby boomers to avoid products from big food companies. Um, and 93% want to buy from companies that have purpose beyond product. So parents want healthy and nutritious. This is some research that we conducted around the top three most important improvements that could help parents with the challenging kid moments. And it's 
definitely healthy, nutritious. The food's got to taste good, um, food with no mess and easy to snack on. And the key pain points we found um, are that conventional snack foods, uh, you know, they're perceived to be nutritionally poor and they're often making misleading claims and hidden ingredients. So you can see there how we're going out quite strongly with um, showing how we're different, removing sugar, removing sodium, doing things just a lot better. So Whole Kids, we've developed a strong product range with a reputation for high quality nutritious snacks. We have over 20 products across five key growth segments um, and we've grown to become one of the largest suppliers of children's snacks across multiple channels, categories and age groups in Australia and New Zealand. Um, this is just some of our innovations so, and how we do things differently. So our little melt away sticks, they've really been developed to take on the heavily sprayed oiled flavoured alternatives that sit within the baby category. Um, we developed soft cereal based on our experience as parents that rather than lugging big bags of cereal out in our nappy bag that um, we could come up with a biscuit that you just simply add uh, milk or water and it stirs up into a first food for baby. And our smoothie drops are taking on one of the highest volume um, drop products in our category that's loaded with sugar and additives and ours contain three ingredients and a really good prebiotic. Uh, likewise, um, you know, Sultanas um, have 79 grams of sugar per 100 grams. We've created a little mini bite that's a similar size but contains 50% whole grain oats and is again plant-based, 100% organic. So we're recognised as a leader in product innovation uh, and category disruption and we're continually identifying and assessing key trends that um, drive health sustainability and our product development pipeline. And just add, <laughs> so um, this is something else we've come across. We want to talk about the elephant in the room um, and that is baby food pouches. Um, so, you know, parents, they have no time. They want quality nutritious food in fast and convenient ways for themselves and their baby. And up until now, this has come at a cost to kids' health and the environment. And if you look here, um, this is just, you know, uh, high, high processed pouches. They are treated heat processed, so they're not particularly nutritious. Most of them are apple based, so they're very high in sugar. And the UK Dental Association has now come out recently and called on the British government to ban pouch within the market because of the problems it's causing around tooth decay, around learned association between sweet snacks and emotional uh, rather than psychological needs um, and likewise the environmental impact. So we had a look at the data on pouch sales within Australia. It's more than 100 million that are going to landfill each year. So tons and tons of waste is being produced and it's something that we have talked about, worked on for a period of 18 months uh, and come up with an alternative. So just add, um, we take whole fruits and vegetables. There's no apple base, there's no sugar. It's all very pure and we remove basically the water um, so that it is a custom customizable format in a small sachet um, that um, parents can add water, breast milk or formula and it mixes up into, um, you know, the vegetable product. It's 90, over 90% 90 Australian ingredients, um, Australian made and owned and mixes up into what tastes like you would have steamed yourself so we're we're really excited about this range um, and the fact that it's launching now in Australia so this is the range we've got a breakfast range that's oats banana avocado and chia um, oats apple berry and acai and then we've got the vegetable range sweet corn broccoli and a sweet potato um, corn Okay, I'll jump in and let Monica catch her breath. Um, and uh, I'm quite happy to talk about this. We've, um, over 18 years, we've uh, kind of led the market in many ways and we've been recognised for our innovation, our leadership um, and, uh, you know, and Monica as a figurehead and entrepreneur. And uh, these are just a list of some of the awards that we've won um, and we're very proud, the whole team's very proud of what we've done so far, but we really feel there's a lot more to do. Um, but she, you know, uh, we've won uh, the Small Business Champion Award 2022 for Australia. Uh, we were nominated for Global Real Leader Impact Awards in 2021. Um, Monica was uh, awarded the Conscious Companies World Changing Women list in 2020. Uh, we were awarded Top 20 Westpac Businesses of Tomorrow in 2018, which is a great award to win. Uh, we also, Monica was Top 100 Women of Influence. Uh, the list goes on. I won't bore you to tears. There's a lot in the offer document if you want to read about that. 
Um, but it really just demonstrates that, you know, um, the industry, um, our peers, and also the wider uh, community and market has recognised, um, I guess, our leadership and innovation in this regard. Uh, and, you know, just coming back to what this is all about with Nourish, it's really at the heart of what out of our business is a commitment to, you know, creating change in the world through social impact and environmental change to create a better world for, you know, our kids of today and future generations. And it's it's uh, one of the reasons we became a certified B Corp to demonstrate our commitment to that. So we were the first food company in Australia to become a certified B Corp. Um, we've um, certified organic products throughout our range. Um, and we're fully committed to campaigning on social and environmental issues that are really important to us personally, but also to our customers. So things like climate change, um, uh, you know, um, uh, food additives, um, uh, hunger in schools, supporting poverty, you know, addressing poverty. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that are, you know, that are concerns to our customers and us. And, you know, we just think there's a lot more we can do with the business and get going. In terms of the business strategy and what we want to do with this current raise, we really want to build on the, you know, the platform and the growth drivers that we've developed over the last couple of years and funded out of the last two crowd funds. Uh, and the focus is on um, really driving the domestic and uh, global growth. So, you know, the two new brands, they've already been taken up internationally, Just Ads already sold out in New Zealand. So we really see a lot of potential for those two brands, along with Whole Kids as well. Um, you know, there are a couple of beachhead markets there that we're really um, uh, fostering and encouraging. We really, as three brands, it's a multi-portfolio now that we want to invest across the brand. Uh, that requires, a, you know, obviously a lot more work, but it's a really exciting time to be building that, knowing that each brand, you know, kind of supports each other as well. So there's an ecosystem of brands as people move through life cycles and ages. Uh, it's not like we're having disparate brands that have no connection to each other. So we see a lot of uh, mutual benefit in investing heavily in the brands. Product innovation, uh, Monica mentioned just add the four lead SKUs are out there and doing exceptionally well. Uh, you know, we really want to uh, innovate in that space as well. You know, we, the huge issue around pouches alone is a, is a reason to do that, but also it's just the nutritional quality of the brand, of the products that are out there currently in pouches. We think we can do it a lot better and um, also make greater impact. Over the last couple of years coming out of COVID, yes, we were quite hit, I think, uh, economically and financially. We really put a lot of work over the last 18 months in um, putting financial sustainability and aiming for profitability in the business. So we've done a lot of operating changes to our operating model uh, and a lot more will be discussed in the offer document around that, but really excited about um, the future in terms of um, profitability and um, uh, financial um, sustainability. And of course, at the heart of it is social environmental impact. So we see a lot of work we can still do across the three brands. Um, and we've talked, you know, we've, we've mentioned that um, uh, previously. So in summary, uh, you know, we've over 18 years, we've created a well-established and respected business. Uh, and now we've got a multi-brand and a multi-channel portfolio, uh, we, which generating strong brand equity and customer loyalty, and also creating that life cycle of customer loyalty through the age groups as well. Um, we have a diverse existing customer base. So it's not just groceries we rely on. We, you know, we have national independent supermarkets, food service, pharmacies, wholesalers, export accounts, uh, independent retailers, um, and so on. Um, and we see that rapidly expanding distribution uh, across those channels as we roll out, particularly just add and offbeat through those channels and also backed up by a strong NPD pipeline. Um, and as mentioned before, we you know, really are at the forefront um, at food innovation and sustainability, and we want to keep that momentum up uh, and really bring change to the industry um, and for our customers as well. So thank you everyone for your time. Um, really appreciate it on a Friday afternoon and being lunch and all. So um, we hope we've kind of given a bit more insight into Nourish Foods, where we are with the three brands, uh, and obviously there'll be a lot more in the offer document when it becomes available um, at the end of the campaign. Awesome. Thank you so much, Monica and James. Super insightful and interesting. It seems like you've been very busy since your last raise, um, which is really exciting to see. So we'll head into question and answer time. So feel free to pop those questions in the box. Um, we've got a few here from Nicole. So Nicole has 
Question one, IRI data suggests the total baby category is estimated at around 240 million. What percentage of the market have you captured? Uh, well, it's a, it's a, if you look at the baby market and the IRR data, baby, it's a, it's a very broad category. So there's wet, dry, snacks. Um, there's a whole lot of different. We don't play in wet, which um, is the dominant part of the market. Um, so we'd need to split that out and get quite granular in terms of getting specific market share on the snacking category, you know, sort of the sub sub segments that we compete in. Um, so we could, you know, IRI data is quite expensive. So, um, you know, it's certainly something that we receive as a snapshot, but to get that granular, we'd need to um, invest a bit of money in getting that granular data. Yeah, so the category is made up of um, baby food, wet pouch formula and snacking, and we do only currently play in snacking. However, Just Dad will be our foray into mm. the wet pouch area. It's being positioned um, squarely to take on that market. Um, so, yeah, uh, we feel that it's it's an exciting time. We're not sure what percentage of uh, that 240 million that snacking represents, but we are, um, you know, particularly within Woolworths, one of the main uh, players within that. Awesome. Uh, we've got another question. So you've developed a very strong brand. Um, what is that reasoning of going down this route versus a bank loan? Um, and they've got a comment assuming the bottom line is very profitable. Yeah, well, we do have um, a bank loan in place, but I think key to uh, this for us is community. And when we looked at crowdfunding and as a B corporation, um, we're probably one of the more established businesses to go down the crowdfunding path. But um, it is important to us that, you know, um, we give our customers an opportunity to come along on the journey with us. And our community is very important in terms of product development, uh, in terms of, um, you know, as a B Corp, creating a, a better change for for the future awesome and a community you have built do you have now what over a thousand shareholders uh, almost a thousand I think about nine almost a thousand it's almost yeah incredible yeah. um we've got another question which I might jump in and answer so the question is what is on offer shares in the parent company so in crowdsource funding anyone who invests through a crowdsource funding raise is uh getting fully owned ordinary shares in the business. Um, I will just say here, absolutely, please go and check out the offer document, which will have information about which company you'll be purchasing the shares in, but it will be the Nourish Foods, which has, as we've just learned in this whole presentation, the three wonderful brands. So any further questions you have, you'll absolutely be get the answers for that in the offer document. So we've got another question here from Steve. Um, congratulations on the success for date. Um, for investors, what is the exit strategy? Now, I might just jump in here and let everyone know a little bit um, about crowdsource funding and about um, the parameters in which we operate as specified by ASIC. So ASIC takes a pretty firm view on any future uh, projected statements, whether they be potential exits, returns, dividends, anything like that. Of course, there might be many things uh, that the company could be considering in terms of exits. Uh, none of these obviously are guaranteed, but James and Monica, are there any sort of exits that you might consider in the future? Yeah, well, I think it, they'll all be uh, documented in the offer um, disclosed in there. But yeah, you're right. The options are, you know, it could be a potential trade sale later, later on, could be an IPO. Um, yeah, it could be, um, th they would be the exit strategies um, that would be at the forefront of our consideration. Yeah. yeah. And if anyone has any specific questions on that, I'd encourage you to look through the FAQ section of our website as well which has more information about that. Essentially, crowdsource funding shares are considered illiquid. They're a long-term investment because you believe in, you know, the, the vision of these, these businesses, um, but there are obviously some options there available. Um, so thank you so much for your question. So Vicky's got a question. Apologies, I joined late. Absolutely fine. Um, will you offer a reply? I'm not sure, but if you've got any questions, please pop them in the box, Vicky. Yeah. Is Otherwise, replay? Is that, do you mean replay? Oh, they've said a replay, perhaps. So yeah. we will send the recording out, Vicky, not to worry. 
Um, so we've got another question here from Vivid. Once you raise this capital, what will be market cap and each share price? So just another little bit of a heads up where we are at the phase at the moment in terms of this raise. So we're in the expression of interest phase. Those key offer terms such as, you know, the share price aren't currently available because we're actually going to market and really learning interest for the offer um, as it stands. So in terms of share price, all of that will be included in the offer document when the offer goes live. So that will be in a little bit over a week's time. Uh, Sharon has a great question here. What are your plans for marketing offbeat to the target audience? Uh, thinking that this will be a big key to this brand's success. Hi, Sharon. Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it will. And this is a TikTok brand, I would say. Yeah. Um, it, and, uh, you know, in your experience with ambassadors, um, that's something that we're definitely looking at. But I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we work, we are working. It's quite a different approach to whole kids and just add, as you'd appreciate, Sharon, with this sort of brand. And we are working with a specialised agency that that really gets the Gen Z audience and that youth market. Um, and so we're putting up, uh, putting developing a plan which will involve, yes, a lot of socials and, you know, user generated content but also looking at um, partnerships with other youth brands, activations, uh, getting involved in events, you know, things like music festivals, things like that, where, you know, this audience naturally gravitates to and gets involved in. Um, and I guess the beauty with the offbeat, offbeat brand and its, and its, and its um, you know, brand values is that it can talk to quite a few different audiences within the gen segment. So, um, you know, it can be taken into a lot of different uh, marketing activities and lots, lots of different environments. I mean, we're really excited. Some of the things about, I mean, you know, things like, you know, street art and, you know, things like that and doing maybe even custom packaging with a youth artist. You know, it's really exciting stuff that, um, you know, we may not be able to obviously do with things like whole kids and just add. So, yeah, we're really excited for the brand. Cool. Um, we've got a question here from Kirsty who has asked, do you have a business contact for product feedback and international offerings? Uh, Australian who has just moved home from living in Hong Kong with two babies, they would love to talk to a contact. Kirsty, you have come to the right place. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, Kirsty. Um, I will take that up with you after this uh, webinar. Wonderful. And Brittany has said they would love to invest. Their son loves all of these foods. Thanks. Thanks, Brittany. Exactly what we want to hear. Uh, we've got another question from Nicole. Where and when will the offer document be available? An excellent question. So the offer document will be available when the offer goes live on June 6th. Now, if you have not yet expressed interest, so by expressing interest, you'll be joining the investor wait list. So you'll get first priority access when the offer goes live. So absolutely encourage you to do that if you have not already. So head to virtual.com and find the company page for Nourish and express your interest there. We'll also send through a link after this, which you can hit straight to. Um, so express interest, you'll get all of the information. You'll get a hotline to James and Monica if you've got any more burning questions as well, which they'll be more than happy to answer. Um, so I hope that answers your question. We've got a a little bit more time so if anyone has any more questions please feel free to pop them in I've got a burning question for you James and Monica now some of the numbers that you've mentioned there huge growth numbers 77 percent in you know was it Woolworths alone I imagine that that brought some challenges for you you know supply chain alone how have you managed to tackle and be able to scale to meet that demand um, we pride ourselves on working very closely with our buyers. So we have an incredibly good relationship, I would say, with uh, the buyer at Woolworths and um, have talked to him about timelines, um, likewise with our suppliers. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, we are, we've increased our production. Um, we, are, you know, have orders coming to, to be rolled out. So, um, yeah, you know, it's one of those tricky things. We've got to be super focused on how we scale, how quickly we scale, where our funding goes. Um, but we are conscious of, um, you know, looking at doing it in a way that, you know, where, uh, we, you know, we review our product margins, we are able to support the retailers and we are sort of taking on that growth in a staged way. Awesome. Thank you. Right. We've got another question in here. 
um, I wish I could stock up then <laughs> that they cost so much, probably because they're full of so many good things. I would happily invest in any children's snacks that are so healthy, wonderful. Um, so we've got another question here. What will be the projected turnover for 23-24? Again, um, circling back to what I mentioned previously, ASIC does take a firm view of how we can talk about those proje projected financial uh, statements. So if you have any more specific questions, I do definitely recommend you reach out to James and Monica for a chat. But obviously, um, we base all of our future looking and forward looking financial perspective information on a reasonable basis of information. So James and Monica have just talked you through things like all of the extensive distribution they have, and that that's coming up. But James and Monica, did you have anything you wanted to add there? Um, no, I mean, the you know, the current financials will be in the offer document and there'll be management commentary around, you know, um, past performance and some, you know, some insights into, you know, with carefully wording, uh, you know, where that directional sort of financial performance and sales growth will come from. So, you know, asking back to, to your comment, Anna, we can't be quite specific in our projections and guidance, but we can, you know, can certainly give some um, broad broad insights into where we're heading and, and what, you know, the, the growth looks like. And definitely those strategies that you're looking at employing, you can see, you know, in that offer document, your past performance, and then be able to, to use that offer document to um, look into that. So thank you so much for your question. We've got another one from Hannah, who said, absolutely love your products and that you're providing nourishing whole food. Can't wait to invest. A question from my kids, a burning one, I'm sure. <laughs> when are your whole kids fruit bars going back on the market? So Hannah, thank you so much. Our fruit bars have such a cult following. Um, they are, you know, we've had to review with 30 odd products in our range, um, you know, where they sit in relation to things. Um, we have had a lot of feedback since we um, we looked to kind of wind down. They've been, they were one of our first products. So they've been in the market for 18 years. And we had a customer call us last week asking the same question. Her 22-year-old daughter <laughs> still eats them. <laughs> so um, we are reviewing and discussing that with our product development team. Um, you know, um, and, and I guess that's part of the challenge is providing new innovation, but also looking at products and where they sit within the product life cycle. So, but we are getting a lot of feedback. So I can't answer that now, but um, it is on the radar. Awesome. Does definitely sound like they've got a cult following and who can blame them? <laughs> uh, also, we've got a question from Steve, a good one. When will the recording of this webinar be available? It will be sent around to you tomorrow. So um, please keep an eye on your emails. You'll receive one from Zoom and probably one from uh, James and Monica as well with all of the information. And again, if you've got any further questions that you might hit you at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night, please absolutely feel free to either reply to that email, send us an, a message on the virtual platform. The team will be more than happy to get back to you. Um, we've got a question here from Hadrian. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Uh, they've got a five and six year old. Embarrassingly, they must say they've never noticed their products in Woolies. Have you paid for premium product placement and would this further increase sales? Uh, so as part of our, I guess, range reviews, there's a commitment to spending over and above in terms of promoting product. Um, I don't know that anyone pays for product placement so much anymore, but we just weigh this up really carefully in terms of what the return will be. And we feel like there's significant growth opportunity without necessarily having to outlay too much at the moment. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but look out for them. They are there. And if you can't find them, please um, talk to the store manager because because they are, you know, part of the planogram. So they definitely, um, they definitely should be there. Hotly requested. Yes. Wonderful. We've got some more time. So if anyone has any more questions, otherwise, James and Monica, has anything else hit you during the process that you want to chat to everybody about? Uh, I don't think so. I feel like our brand still has a long way to go. And to that last point, um, not knowing or discovering until now, we would just really love people's help in sharing out. Um, you know, for us, we are committed to being a big corporation and to 
doing things a little bit differently when it comes to our industry and our business. So um, we do rely on investment from our community and, um, you know, the more we can raise, the more we can get out there and affect change. So um, if you could share out, that would be a huge help. And thank you for expressing your interest. It's, um, yeah, we're really actually humbled by the process. Awesome. So we might wrap up then. Oh, we've got one more question. Uh, will the Just Add products be coming out as a single serve or as a bulk size? Asking as a keen customer, but also interested as a potential investor. So currently they're single serve. So um, they are sitting at the moment in Chemist Warehouse for a retail price of $2.49. Um, so they're really convenient, really accessible. Uh, and we are looking at a bulk format as well. Awesome. Good to know. Keep an eye on my local shelves. Uh, Steve's got a question here. Are you allowed to promote to child day centres? Uh, I'm not sure about mm. promoting, but we are talking to them about, um, you know, just, just add in a bulk convenient format that would actually eliminate a lot of waste and a lot of time when it comes to feeding little ones. So, um, yeah, that's something that we're definitely um, is on, on the radar there. Great. We've got a note here from Hadrian. They'll take the kids and try them out. Awesome to hear and use it to have a conversation about investing. Fantastic. Thanks, Thank Adrian. you, Hadrian. We're happy to send some to you if you'd like to email us with your address. Wonderful. Now, if anyone has any more questions, obviously, as I said, please, after the fact, email them through. The team will be thrilled to chat with you. Um, as we said before, the offer will be going live on the 6th of June. So please get your expression interest expression of interest in before then, if you haven't already to be given that early access, you'll get all of the information on how to access that through uh, emails from the team. Again, any questions do reach out. Um, so the offer document, constitution and subscription agreement will be all available when the offer goes live to download from the platform. Um, and that investment offer will open at 12 p.m. So we hope to see you online then. I'll hand over to James and Monica to sign us off for the day. But from virtual, it's been a pleasure to have you. And if you've got any questions, you can also reach out to us as well. But thank you all. Thanks, Anna. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Enjoy your Friday. Have a great weekend. And um, thank you again for all your support. Yeah, thank you, everyone. And, um, yeah, I hope you can join us on the journey. We've got... A lot of exciting things ahead of us and we'd love to have, be, have you a part of it. So thank you again for your time. Awesome. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.